Hi everybody. Um, you, you may not be aware of the Facebook site WSU Rants, but um, there was a post on it recently on the 30th of December 2018 um, in which a, a student um, shared their thoughts about um, studying and success and so on at university. Um, it would appear the student is a first year student, but nonetheless their, um, their comments are, are pretty mature and, and useful. Uh, I started thinking about it the other day when I read it, um, and I thought I'd just share with you my reflections uh, after reading it, because it might be uh, helpful to you in your in your unit that we're doing here principles of economics okay so let's have a look at it here's the WSU rants page if we scroll down here we go so this this uh, this post isn't to brag about my grades um, they're saying that because they've posted down here their grades for autumn and spring semester and you can see that they're doing a Bachelor of Medical Science and they've done very very well so good work them this is an anonymous post so we don't know who it is anyway so they say they write um, I'm not a person who spends their entire time in the library with books. Neither am I someone extraordinarily intellectual. Oh, that should be rewritten. Neither am I someone who is extraordinarily intellectual. Anyway, I'm someone who loves to skip lectures and binge watch Netflix instead. There have been days when I procrastinated and left my assignments to the last minute, but they've never missed it. Uh, Okay. Um, what they implicitly assume here is there's kind of this dichotomy between, well, there's the extraordinarily intellectual student and then there's students who fall prey to procrastination and um, who like binge watching Netflix or that sort of thing, we skip their lectures. Uh, but this dichotomy is somewhat artificial. Obviously you can find people who fall into these camps, but the dichotomy is not a real one. Uh, an example of that is the famous uh, political economist, um, the last of the great political economists of the 19th century, Karl Marx. Um, Karl Marx was undoubtedly an extraordinarily uh, gifted and intellectual student. There's no doubt about that. He studied several languages. Uh, he studied law. He studied modern and ancient philosophy. He wrote a dissertation on uh, ancient philosophy. Uh, and he also he was he was a tad obsessed by ancient Greece and Rome. He wrote once that um, as relaxation in the evenings I've been reading Appian on the Roman civil wars in the original Greek. So this is what he was doing in his spare time. However, we also know um, because he was spied upon by the Bonn police that um, in their reports they wrote that Marx, as a university student, um, never attended his lectures and he was mostly down the pub uh, arguing about God and drinking wine by the litre, apparently. So uh, you can definitely be a procrastinating, lecture-skipping student and a great intellect at the same time. That dichotomy is not a legitimate one. Uh, that background noise you can hear is my neighbours who believe they can sing but can't. 
Okay, back to the post. Uh, trust me, I'm a pretty average student. And despite the grades they got apparently, I'm a pretty average student. And if someone like me can get such grades, then probably anyone can. All you need is consistency, planning and smart work. What do you think? I'm is making a video right now. Yeah, this is my rooster, is that good? <laughs> Compared. <laughs> Compared to this, is that okay? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> my rooster, my New Year's rooster. Okay, get lost now. <laughs> All right. So if you, <laughs> if you're someone for whom it hasn't been a good year academically, then don't just give up yet. Okay. This is excellent advice. Study, of course, is the key to this. Um, and one of the keys to study is the why of studying. Why are you doing this? I.e., it's about motivation. So, motivation here can be extrinsic. That is, some kind of motivation coming from outside of you. Say, for example, I want good marks or you know, I like the approval of others or something like, or I, uh, if I do this, then I get good marks and maybe I can get this kind of job. This is a kind of extrinsic motivation. But it also could be intrinsic motivation. That is that within yourself, you're interested in the content of the unit. Um, now, you might just, for some reason or other, already be interested in the content of the unit and then it's no problem. You have motivation already. Uh, but if you don't, uh, an interesting trick which you can try and play on yourself, so to speak, is to make yourself interested in the subject. Try and link the content of the unit in some way to your life, for example. Try and think to yourself um, how this is important, either to you personally or to things that you already care about. Um, in the case of economics, I mean, there's lots of ways in which you can think about how the subject can be interesting to you personally. Uh, either in your daily life, or you can think about it in terms of, say, for example, economic policy, which goes into the world of um, politics. Um, how, do you make a, how do you make a better society? And economics is absolutely fundamental to that because economic policy shapes the nature of the society in which we live. Okay. Um, another key to studying is not just the why, the motivation, but the how. How do you study? Now, I've talked about this in a previous video. The how will depend on the subject. How you study depends on the nature of the subject that you're looking at. Uh, but all subjects, no matter what they are, whether you're doing philosophy or anthropology or English literature or you're doing um, pure applied mathematics or physics or marketing or management or accounting or economics or finance um, or medicine, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, it will always involve some combination of what we could call drilling in the military sense of drills. You do things in a systematic and fairly repetitive way until it's kind of bashed into your brain, so to speak. It becomes part of your muscle memory, so to speak. And the other part is contemplation. That is where you're thinking reflectively and critically about that which you're drilling yourself on. Okay? Is what I'm learning true in all cases, everywhere? When does it apply? When doesn't it apply? Is this morally right? Or are there untoward moral implications that flow from what I'm learning here? Uh, how is this relevant to life in general? And does that matter? And so on. In any case, um, both of these how issues 
drilling and contemplation require planning. Uh, they require planning of your time and planning of your effort during that time. And it also requires determination to stick to the plan that you set up for yourself to complete a unit. Uh, also, it implies a backup plan. That is, when your plans get knocked off course for some reason or other, something happens in life, as inevitably does, what's your backup plan? How do you, what's your plan for getting back on track? That's also important. So what the student has said here in this post, it's absolutely vital to your success in a unit. The quote unquote pretty average student, and by that I assume is meant a person of average cognitive ability, can nonetheless do extremely well if they study, that is that they put in the effort which requires motivation and um, technique, so to speak. All right, let's go on with the post. <clears throat> My main goal this year was to get into medical school, and um, which I couldn't do due to the terrible UMAT, I think this is a university medical admissions test. Anyway, so, no, uh, so I was almost about to give up my dream of becoming a doctor. Um, After I got my results, I kept telling myself that the medical profession is not for me and I'm not capable or enough of being a doctor. Unfortunately, like it or not, our education system and society more generally um, values marks. Marks matter, unfortunately. Um, and the reason that they matter is because they serve as imperfect signals to others. Um, unfortunately, especially unfortunately, they are inappropriately assumed to be signals of ability. So, for example, if you got all HDs um, in your uh, units, at uni, or you got an ATAR of 97, then often an instinctive response to that is, wow, this person must be really smart. So it's implying there's a kind of intellectual ability that's built into the person, and that's what the mark is a signal of, or a reflection of. Um, but this is not really true. Marks are always a reflection of a mysterious combination of uh, cognitive ability, which itself is malleable, and effort that is put into um, a subject that one's studying. Okay. Well, then both of them result in a mark performance at a particular moment in time on a particular test. Uh, but this doesn't really tell you anything about someone's ability in and of itself. So for example, uh, a friend of mine um, who studied the HSC at the same time as me, way, way back in 1990, uh, got the equivalent of an ATAR score. Back then there wasn't an ATAR, it was called the TR, Tertiary Entrance Rank. And it was calculated differently to how the ATAR is today. But I did an equivalency table for myself to figure out what, how you could convert the numbers. And he got the equivalent of an ATAR of 45. So do we now know about his ability? You know, not particularly crash hot? Well, some people would say, yes, this is, um, you know, this is a signal that he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, so to speak. And uh, certainly people in the wider society will think that. Many students will think that. Um, some academics will think that as well. 
Uh, but these are people who are shallow-minded and uh, um, really haven't thought through the issues very carefully. Uh, it would be good if we could get that person, my friend, to do the HSC again under different circumstances and see if we got the same result. Well, that's exactly what happened. The next year he went back and did the HSC again. Uh, he didn't get 45 this time. Um, this time he got 79. This is a massive jump in the ATAR score. Um, why this huge difference? Well, the main reason was because when he went back, he didn't do the same subjects he did in the first place. He chose subjects that he was interested in, that he liked, right? that motivated him. In the rest of this paragraph, they go on to talk about how um, so they weren't pursuing their dream, um, which meant that they were in a kind of, um, you know, a stress-free environment, and so in some sense they were happier, they'd given up this notion of becoming a doctor and they could just enjoy their lives. However, they felt there was something missing from their life, there was a doctor-shaped hole in their life, so to speak, um, and they weren't truly happy. So, um, obviously, they've left out some of their personal story here, but obviously they went back and somehow managed to get into university to do their Bachelor of Medical Science. So their message is that, um, uh, and this is ma give them a sense of uh, a true satisfaction or true happiness because they're making some kind of contribution, they're achieving something. So their, their point is, so never give up on your dreams. We're all unique and have endless potential. Don't quit and succumb to whatever is stopping you from being at your best. Um, here, I reacted quite, um, I won't say negatively, but I would say I had a visceral reaction of, this sounds a bit Tony Robbins-ish and uh, not entirely accurate. I mean, it sounds nice, but, you know, there's an uncomfortable, there are uncomfortable truths that are being left out of this story. Of course, um, everyone's unique uh, in some basic sense. As a concrete being, uh, no one's absolutely identical to you. But that's nothing particularly to be proud of. I mean, that's just a dull fact about the material world. Uh, that was always going to be the case. If you wouldn't be you otherwise. Um, but in terms of what you do in the world, in terms of the functions you perform in the world, you're not truly unique. Uh, you're replaceable. It's disturbing, I know, but there you go. Uh, for example, in my workplace, there have been people who, who I've said, oh, you know, I wouldn't know what to do without you. I mean, you're, you know, you're irreplaceable, you're essential to this working environment. Um, and then they've left for some reason or other. And within six months, it was as if they were never there. Of course, someone might be remembered once they've gone and been replaced by something else or someone else. Of course they'll be remembered um, if, if you're lucky you'll be remembered but in time those memories will fade and eventually there will come a time when n no one will think of you at all. So Bear that in mind. God, that was depressing. Um, 
another point is obviously we, no one has limit endless potential that's that's just a ridiculous statement everyone has limited potential uh, no one can do everything that they anything that they set their set their minds to or set their hearts to that's just nonsense uh, and in some sense it has a disturbing implication to it do we say to a Sudanese child who's, um, you know, starving to death that, well, they could choose to be a tech billionaire executive if they wanted to. Right? Uh, they have endless potential to achieve that. No, that's not, a, that's not a realistic kind of scenario. That's just not true. It's, it's equally not true for the average Australian child. Not everyone's going to be a billionaire tech executive. The way in which our society and economy is structured is such that that's literally impossible. Okay? Uh, if everyone's the billionaire, imagine the scenario, everyone's the tech billionaire. Who's producing the tech in that case? If everyone's the billionaire, no one's producing the tech. It doesn't work that way. There's a structure to our society and our economy which curtail possibilities, which curtail potential. All right? Um, so the notion that you should follow your dreams is, you know, no matter what, is not really great advice um, you shouldn't be so naive about that you should absolutely examine your dreams and you should examine them critically and unsentimentally if it turns out that your dreams are um, your dreams are impractically absurd in the cold light of day or if your dreams look silly and immature as you gain more experience in life or if your dreams end up you can see they'll start to conflict with your basic moral principles or with basic human dignity then don't be a fool or a monster and continue to follow your dreams Abandon your dreams. Kick them to the curb. No. Don't treat your dreams as somehow, somehow forever fixed out there. This guiding star which you should follow no matter what. That's ridiculous. Uh, and furthermore, as you'll discover as you uh, move through life, your dreams change. And often they change after the fact. That is to say, often you'll, dis you'll realize that uh, what your dreams are follow from what you're doing at any given moment in time. That is to say, um, often, more often than not, in reality, you don't, you don't actually follow your dreams. Rather, you discover them in the process of experiencing life. Okay, what's the next thing they say? Here we go. There's nothing wrong with binge watching Netflix or procrastinating or just idling away your time. Well, that's a bit of a hard turn, which seems to contradict what they were saying before. Um, but anyway, but just know that each action of yours, each decision you make, has its own consequences and you should learn to take responsibility for those consequences. It sounds like ch channeling Jordan Peterson there. Anyway, if you spend one entire Friday evening boozing around, make sure you take responsibility for it and plan in advance on how you make up for it, like doubling your study the next day. Once you get to that level of maturity, <laughs> uh, success won't be far away. Okay.
Um, yeah, as far as boozing around goes on a Friday night, sure, you should realise the relate the cause effect relationships at work, um, and realise that you have some a great deal of control over the causes. So you are fairly responsible for the effects insofar as they directly follow from boozing around on Friday night or for a whole week or a whole month or something like that. But as a general metaphysical statement, uh, you should always take responsibility for the consequences of your actions. This, I think, is not quite right. It's, it's reflective of the individual zeitgeist in which we live at this particular moment, as reflected in the work of that um, psychologist turned, you know, uh, general guru, Jordan Peterson. Uh, always bear in mind that people who are experts in their field are experts only in their field. They're not experts about anything else. About everything else, they're just an average moron. Anyway, uh, yes, each decision you make has consequences, of course, but those consequences are not entirely of your own making. Uh, in fact, your decisions themselves, the choices you make, uh, irrespective of the consequences, are not entirely of your own making. No one is an island. You exist in and are shaped by the social context in which you exist. It's almost self-evident. So you exist in a family context, you exist in a, an educational context, you exist in an economic context, you exist in a cultural context, you exist in a political context, which you don't control. You're born into these contexts, which existed before you and will exist after you, obviously changing along the way. Uh, and you don't control, you're not some kind of God who controls all of these things. Um, so, to be sure, you can take some responsibility for the decisions you make. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the extent to which you control the causes of those consequences. Uh, but you never have total control over all the causes of the consequences uh, that you experience in life. In which case, you can't take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. For for the outcomes of all your decisions. Um, so you can't blame yourself entirely for all of your failures. But equally, you can't praise yourself or claim credit entirely for the successes you experience either, however they're defined. Anyway, that'll do for now. Have a good New Year.